would like to continue with that? Amen. Bible says, it says, people like Enoch, people like Abraham, people like Moses, Samuel, they walked with the Lord and they enjoyed the friendship of God. Amen. And the book of Psalm 25, he says, I think verse 14, Psalm 25 verse 14 says, the secret of the law resides with those who fear him, who revere him. Amen. The secret of the Lord resides with those who honor him and who keep his covenant. So we understand that God is interested in sharing himself with humanity. Now, and with that also comes a responsibility. Like we said last week, we said that friendship, what it does is friendship changes us. As we go into friendship, you end up getting changed. And as you stay in friendship, most likely you tend to turn into or start to cultivate the characteristics of your friends too. You develop uh, uh, the language, the cliches, the mannerisms, we pick them up. And then before you know it, you start to think alike. And in fact, for in marriages, I have heard that those who have been married for so long, 40, 50 years, you begin to look alike, right? Okay. Science tells us that if you're married to somebody who enjoys good food, it's most likely that uh, the other spouse will start to enjoy good food as well. If you marry somebody, yeah, yeah? Is it true? Okay, good, all right, <laughs> okay, good. All right, okay, praise God. So we pick up similar interests. So in other words, in friendship, in, the influence is mutual, most likely. So in making friends with God, just imagine the kind of power, the kind of way, the degree to which our lives get transformed. A man of God showed up. He was walking somewhere. And children started to ridicule him. And he called two bears to clean up 42 children. Straight, Elisha, you know the story. Amen. The same man stood on the mountain and the king said, go fetch me this prophet. And as he went there, sent his, the, the uh, army officers to go get him. The man sat quietly and said, if I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven to devour you and your fifties. Mm. So first 50 were consumed, second 50 were consumed. That's a hundred people dead, displaying the power of his friend, mm. amen. And suddenly the third person decided to wise up. I mean, if you see, a hundred dead people, you should think twice, right? You don't need uh, somebody to sit you down for a lecture. And he begged him. He came in humility and the man of God showed mercy. What am I trying to say? Moses was one man who was in the wilderness. Moses was raised as a prince, highly educated. When he committed murder, he started to run away. And as he ran away, he, he became a fugitive in the process of being a fugitive where he was living in Midian. The Bible says, and God appeared to him. A regular man, a farmer, he became a farmer there in Midian. As he was farming, uh, you know, raising sheep, the Lord appeared to him and his life changed. God started to talk with him. God started to talk with him. Can I? It depends on the kind of soil that God's word goes into. When I talk about soil, I'm talking about the heart. Some of us hear the word and the voice of God. Nothing 
changes. Some do here and life, our lives get transformed. Amen. It is the word of God must be received in order to enjoy what it carries within it. Hello? Amen. Moses took the word and he started to obey. And as he kept on developing friendship, going back to consult with God in prayer, seeking his face, Lord, I went there and they told me no. Can I tell you something? Sometimes God may send you on an errand. It doesn't mean doors are going to open automatically. Mm. Hello? No, it doesn't mean things are going to work like just because God sent. If that was the case, <laughs> it would have been a lot easier, right? Sometimes God will send you on the hardest mission. He knows the first time the door is not going to open. The tenth time, the door is not going to open. Was it not God that said to Elijah, hey, I'm ready to send rain? If, if Elijah was hearing well from God, why should Elijah go back on top of the mountain and bow himself and cry his heart out? It was God's instruction. So it's supposed to work out some way. Am I correct? So in other words, the word of God comes in like the seed in the womb of a woman. But the process of gestation and, and growth, development of the futures, futures it, it takes time. And now the person carrying the baby or carrying the vision or the dream has to go through some certain circumstances and situations. It doesn't make it any easier, but it always makes it possible. Amen. Come on now. And then this man came, he prayed, and then he said, pray first time, rain didn't fall, pray second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, and then the seventh time. Now, in other words, the word of God that we receive is supposed to give us the courage to keep pushing until we see it. No. Hello? The word is supposed to give courage to keep pushing until we see it, to keep confessing until it manifests, to keep giving until you break through, to keep working until the word must continue until you see it. The problem is sometimes you give up too quickly. So we looked at friendship from uh, the, the people saw examples of those who walked with God and what God did with their lives. Amen. Yeah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Now, if you come with me to the book of John, chapter 15, verse 14 and 15, what does it say? It said, if you are my friends, you will do what I tell you. Right? Right? Obedience. Obedience. And we talked about obedience last week as well. We say in the Old Testament, obedience is key. Can you open it for me? Anybody there? Open it for me, please. John 14, 15. John 15. John 15. Verse 14. And 15. Huh? You are my friends. If ye do, ye are my friends, if ye do, I'm not calling you servants anymore, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord For the servants don't know what their Lord is doing, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. Amen. Come on, amen. Can you move this closer, please? I have called your friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. I have made it known to you for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. He said, if you are my friends, you will do what I tell you. So there is a condition to being God's friend. Obedience is key. Amen. Obedience is key. 
But remember, when Jesus made this statement, this, he, it was still the Old Testament time. This particular passage, the book of John, is a combination of both the Old and the New Testament account. So at this time that Jesus was making this statement, th this was still the Old Testament era. So the word friend was still being used. Amen. And obedience was paramount at the time. If you are my friends, you got to do what I tell you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. If you are my friends, the condition is you got to listen to me and you'll follow what I tell you. If you are my friends, you stay and listen. If you are my friends, you stay and listen. So every form of disobedience to God is a declaration that we are no friends. Isn't that scary? For somebody to make a, such a statement to God saying, uh, I'm not your friend. You are not my friend anymore. So we don't play ball anymore. We don't have any collaboration anymore. So when Jesus made this statement, what does that mean? It means, it means, it means, I also have things I want to declare to you. Amen. Amen. So in other words, during friendship, there is a given and taken. Mm -hmm. For all that the Father has given to me, have I made known to you? Jesus is the one that's saying this. All that they, I, I like us to just pay attention to the process here. All that the Father has given to me, I have made them known to you because we are friends. All that the Father, all that the Father has made known to me, I has given to me. I have made known to you because what? We are friends. Okay. Now, let's move further. After a few chapters, you come to where Jesus died. When he died, look at what the scripture says, Romans chapter 8. So when Jesus died, the era of the Old Testament ended. The Old, Old Testament era ended when Jesus died. Now, when he resurrected, when he resurrected, the New Testament began. Mm. Amen? Right. And this is what he said here. This is what he said. Are you there with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, Romans chapter 8. Help me out if you are there. Verse 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17, Romans chapter 8. The spirit himself is my, bears witness, testifies as a witness that we are the children of God. Then, then heirs, heirs of God. And, hello. The first time says you are my friends. The era of friendship ended when Jesus died. A new era was introduced. And the new era says, read it again, verse 16. There is a spirit. Now, how did we come about this spirit? How did we come about having this spirit to bear witness with our spirit? Galatians 4, 6. Because we have become sons, now, now, don't even, don't even go to Galatians yet. Let's pause a little bit. Go to John chapter 1, verse 12. To, For as many as believe him, gave he the what? The power or the right to become the sons of God. So the belief translates us from friendship into sonship. Hello? Come on now. Praise God. Belief changes our position. It changes our stance. It changes our relationship. It, it introduces not just a new era. It introduces us to. It translates us from being mere friends to becoming sons. So it says to those who believe him, he has given the authority to become sons. 
become just like friendship grows gradually, so sonship also grows. When you say become, you become a son. You are born instantly, but through exercise, through a uh, book of uh, Hebrews chapter five, it says for strong meat is for those who through the exercise, through exercise have trained their senses, amen? Through practice, they have trained their senses. Those are the ones that can receive strong meat. Strong meat there is talking about, it's not steak. It's talking about strong word of God, instructions from God. For God to speak to us, we have to train ourselves to hear. And to the degree to which we train ourselves, we determine the degree to which he speaks to us and the, the weight of what he shares with us. Am I, am I, are you hearing what I'm saying? You can hear what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not just talking about the sound. You, you understand what I'm saying. So you see that the honor is on us. It is not God. So many things that we wait for God and say, oh God, I'm going to pray. He's going to do this for me. He's going to, no, God said, no, 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 no. You are the one to work it out. When you believed in me, I made the authority available. When you believed in me, you were brought into the kingdom. You became a son and a daughter in my family. If you choose to remain a baby, that's up to you. But if you want to grow up to become sons, then I can also serve you adult food. Hello. Come on now. Adult food is for the adults who have trained themselves. When, you, when we serve our, our children chicken that has bones, you know how they handle it. You know how they handle it. You know. But there are some people who can actually handle the bone well and crack it and exercise their teeth. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Now, he's saying here, as many as believe him, I want us to please note that verse, mark it down, as many as believe him, gave he the power. The power here is, is, is not dunamis, is exousia, is authority. Amen? He, to as many as believe him, gave he the right, the authority to become, and the becoming is through exercise. Maybe you have to get a copy of my book. Amen. All right. Is to, is to become by what? exercise and in exercise you have the time to fail you you there's room for failure created in the practice so when you fail you don't knock yourself out of the game when you make mistakes you repent you pick up and daddy say yeah you want to go again go ahead i'm right here there's room for mistakes there's room for trying again and again because the goal of God is not for us to achieve things here and there. The goal of God is to grow us into sonship and daughtership. Um, Come on now. And sons and daughters don't grow until they are able to exercise. One plus one, we got to remember that it's always two. Has that changed? Everything is changing these days. Have they changed it yet? Okay, one plus one is still two. All right, now when we memorize one plus one and it becomes two, then we have to come and say, okay, what about one times one? One times two, or two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four. We learn that, am I right? And then we learn our A, B, C. I remember when we, some of us started, uh, we, we used to jump some. You know, you jump, you skip some, they still clap hands for us anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but that is still the training period. This is the training period. So that when you are laying hand on somebody for healing or you're speaking healing and the healing is not coming instantly, you are not seeing it instantly and you think, oh, my faith doesn't work. No, your faith works. 
your faith is still in the process of being developed. When you are listening to hear God and you are hearing, but you are not quite sure if that was God because his voice, sometimes it comes on a high pitch. Sometimes it's so calm. Sometimes it just looks at you and you can sense that God has approved you. You are still learning. It's the process of becoming what? Becoming a son. So you don't quit, you don't slacken, you don't get discouraged when you do not hit the A's and the A pluses instantly. It is the growing stage. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Don't give up on yourself. So because he gave us his, the authority to become sons, so he accepted us. That's why he put that spirit, that of a, a, a privilege. He gave us the privilege to develop ourselves as sons. So Galatians chapter four, verse six says, and because we are now sons, he has sent the spirit of his son to dwell where within us. In other words, the spirit of his son relocated from heaven and he's taking residence where? Right here. Where does the Holy Spirit live? Come on, answer me, please. Where does the Holy Spirit live? In us. Hallelujah. Have you heard so many people say, oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have Father, send out your spirit to come to be with us now as we gather. That is a baby praying. That is a baby praying. I'm, I'm, I don't want to step on toes. Okay, but none of us here, we, we don't do that. We know better. All right. But that is a baby prayer. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in heaven. He lives in the temple that resides on the earth. And the church is that temple. And I'm a member of that temple. So now he says, because we are sons, he has sent his spirit to do what? To indwell us. Help me read it, please. Help me read it. Help me read it. Because you are sons. Because you are sons. God has sent forth the spirit of his son. Of his son. Into, your into our hearts, bearing a witness with us and, and assuring us that he is our father. Amen. Amen. Come on now. And because he is our father, what happens is Romans picked it up. Paul sent a letter to the church in Romans, in Rome. And then he said to him in, verse, in chapter 8, verse 16 now, he said, oh, if sons then what? Heirs. Mm. Help me read it again. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. If sons, then heirs. Because when we say, oh, he has put, he sent his spirit into our hearts, and now we can say, Father, we can call God Father, and we stop there, then that is where the story ends. What is so exciting about becoming a son of God? The graduation from friendship, friendship was an introduction to the reality that was just about to be made manifest in the New Testament. Jesus, everything waited for the blood of Jesus to be shed so that our sins and our, our bondages, the broken sins washed away, and then we be translated from friendship into sonship. And right after being translated from friendship into sonship, God Hallelujah. moved in. Hallelujah. He moved in. Help me out if you are there. 16. 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the children of God. Hang on. Galatians 4. It says, because he has sent his spirit into us, crying what? Abba, Father. So that spirit now assures us, he bears witness within our spirit that we are sons of God. But it didn't stop there. He said, hang on, hang on. Don't get overly excited. If you are a son, that means you are an heir, co-heir or joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. They said, can you see the differences? Before it was, you are my friends. You are no longer just servants. Before he signed the dotted line and died. All right, you are my friends. And because you're my friends, everything that the father has shown me, has given me, I have revealed to you. So if friendship can bring us to a place where Jesus is willing 
to share everything that the father has given to him with his disciples, what do you think sonship positions us for? Sonship doesn't position us to behave as friends, to expect as friends, and to receive what just friends get. But sonship gives us access to ownership. Hallelujah. Uh, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friendship makes you an owner. Friendship puts you on a better footing. Uh, sorry, sonship. Sonship puts you on a better footing, better position, with better privileges, way better privileges. If friendship qualifies me to know all that Jesus knows, then sonship qualifies me to own all that Jesus owns. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Isn't that exciting? As a friend, as a friend, when I was a friend, it was my privilege to know what the father was thinking, but I have to ask Jesus. But as a son, I am an, I have full access to whatever Jesus has full access to. Amen. Oh, come on. Come on. That means the position of Jesus and my position is the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought somebody was going to get excited. Hallelujah. 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 If sons, then heirs. Hallelujah. And joint heirs with who? Christ. How does that change how you approach God? How should that affect how you see yourself? How should that affect how you communicate in prayer? Where does that leave the feeling of helplessness? Out in the gutters, right? Where we say, can, can, I, can I tell us? Many Christians that are sons and daughters are too used to the lifestyle of friendship, so they still live in the friendship zone relating to their father. Amen. Amen. They are not willing to come on, come on up higher and sit at the table and say, Daddy, no, that's not what I asked for. You like your coffee black? No, I like all the things that go with it. You can make a demand. When Jesus was on earth, the Bible says he was the one with the power to reverse death, to heal the sick, to drive out demons to a point where they said, hey, this guy is either possessed of demons or we have never seen something like that before. Is that not what the gospel said? When Jesus was preparing the people, what did he say to them? He said, yeah, I have given you the power to raise the dead, to heal the sick, and to cast out demons. And now he commissioned us to go with the same message that the father commissioned him to go with, the message of the kingdom. But now he said to them, before you go, you guys, hang on, I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to send you what I have always carried within me that gave me such audacity. He said, stay and wait for me, for you in Acts chapter 1. Help me out. Verse 8. He said, for you shall be filled with, the, with power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you can manifest me in you. In, oh. Hallelujah. 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 This thing timed out. What's going on? Hallelujah. And then you can manifest me. You can manifest me. You manifest me. How do you manifest me? Through the power of the Holy Spirit that resides within us, that has made us sons and daughters. Can I tell you something? I was listening to a preacher preach, you know, and he said something. Uh, how many of us know uh, Jesse Duplantis? Jesse Duplantis, you know? Jesse? Okay. Dr. Jesse? 
Dr. Jesse said, God said to him, that Jesus came to him, he said, I have the power to kill you and, and take you up to heaven, but I don't have the authority to do that. Because the authority to give life is with the church. Do you know the most powerful organization on earth? It's not the US Army. It's not the, the Army of the Israelis. No, it's the church. The church is the most powerful organization in the world. The church is the most powerful single organization in the entire world. The church can decide today to say, the world should not end for the next thousand years. God will backtrack the record. If the church decides and say the world ends today, God will also go accordingly. Hallelujah. Everything on earth is given to the church, the body of Christ, to continue to manage on behalf of Christ. So in other words, you are not some I don't want to use that word. We are better than what we think. We are better positioned than we think. We are more powerful than we realize. This is the reason why the, the devil tries to break us apart. Oh, that is Anglican. That is Catholic. That is uh, what do you call them? Uh, 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 Pentecostal. That is charismatic. The charismatic. They are too loud. They speak in tongues too loud. These ones are too quiet. They are chosen, frozen Baptist. There is nothing different between us. If Jesus is the head, one single person in a village somewhere who is any village anywhere, whether Europe, Africa, Asia, that believes in Jesus has the same power that Jesus has. Because we are now co-heirs. There is nothing that Jesus has that you don't have. There is no way, can, can, I, can I tell you something? When Jesus, Ephesians, help me read Ephesians. He said, for we are blessed, for God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Another place, he said, for who has raised us to sit with him far above principalities to sit with him. He raised us up to sit with him far above principalities and powers, okay? And over all dominion, and over all, do you know what, how the devil gets the church to flip the wrong switch? The devil makes us to focus on the physical things, things, this is how they are going. And then we are quick to talk. When you speak, you have just flipped a switch. It could be a switch that will be harmful, a deterrent to block the way, to cause a leakage, or it could be a switch that produces life. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that use it shall enjoy its benefit. The authority of God is released by your words. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of God is channeled through the church. The power of the living God is channeled through the church. In the family, when the devil shows up and he's turning this against that and he's causing havoc and he's you know, bringing confusion, if one person can just gain sanity and reorder with the right statement, everything changes. Everything changes. He says, for he has given us the power to become sons. Mm. Why? Because we believe. And because now we are sons, he has sent his spirit to dwell within us. Hallelujah. And since he has sent his spirit to dwell within us, that means that we are no longer friends. We are actually owners, co-owners with Christ Jesus. So you can go to God, you can use anything that, oh, can, 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 let, let, me, let, let me touch this. Do you know that the name of Jesus 
is your personal property, just like you have your car. Do you know that? Do we know that? Do we know that the name of Jesus is our personal property? Just like you have your car, just like you have your house that God has blessed you with. So as you have your car, you can take your keys and say, I'm going on a drive the same way you can use the name of Jesus the way you want. The name of Jesus is no useful in heaven. That name, Jesus, is no, or Yeshua, just salvation, is no useful in heaven because there's no opposition in heaven. There's no death, there's no sickness, there's no sadness, there's nothing negative of that Satan can do in heaven. So that name is not in, is not, is not in use in heaven. The name is re, is, was released and left for us here because here on earth is where we need to still keep things under control. Am I correct? This is where the devil is. So when you talk about the name of Jesus, it's your personal property. It's the same thing that we, we do. Many Christians have yet to know that the peace, peace of mind is, doesn't come from God. God left it. Jesus left it here. He says, peace, I give to you. Peace, I give to you. I'm not giving you the way you guys give gifts on earth. He said, do not permit your heart to be troubled. I have given you my peace. Why do you think Satan comes with anxiety and things that will worry you and cause you to be afraid and insecure? Because as you focus on the things that create anxiety, he can steal the peace from you. Why doesn't he go to heaven to take the peace? Because peace is not, it doesn't reside there. Heaven is a peaceful place, but the peace that Jesus gave resides with the church. The same thing with the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we don't say, oh, we, we, the Holy Spirit came down. No, the Holy Spirit came down once on the day of Pentecost and he's still here. He's still working. Amen. So I would like us to now take our focus from developing friendship. Now that we have become sons to begin to act and live as sons. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I was a friend. Now I am a son. I had to wait for him to give me instructions and tell me what to do as he received from heaven. So he will give to me. But now that I'm a son, I have access to what the father thinks. Oh, let's go back to that book of Corinthians again. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 12. What does it say again? Oh, come on. Hallelujah. I have access. I have access. Now we have received, now we have received not the spirit of the world, the spirit which is of God. but the spirit which is of God. So that, so that we might know the things, know the things that, that are freely given to us. Hallelujah. For the spirit does what? He said, for those things are the things we, we preach, right? We speak them. This is also we speak. Uh-huh. Not in the words which by his wisdom uh -huh. teaching, uh -huh. but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Yeah, keep going. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. spiritual. Keep going. But the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Of the spirit. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. For the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. What is he trying to say? What is he saying? What is it saying? It is saying that if you live by what you can see, understand, and what you can feel, if you live by the dictates of your circumstances, you will be out of tune with the spirit, what the spirit is saying. Okay? Four. What's the next verse? The things of the spirit, for they are spiritually, yes, yes, yeah, go keep going. But that is spiritual judges all things for the one himself is judge of the Uh huh. For who has known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct you, uh -huh. but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. For who has known the mind of, man, of God, that the, who has known the mind of man that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of what? Christ. 
We have the mind of? We have the mind of? We have the mind of? Of Christ. How do we come about having the mind of Christ? We come about having the mind of Christ when the spirit of Christ took residence within our spirit. We have the mind of Christ. Amen. This is the reason why when whatever is going on in your life, let me, let me just remind us, whatever is going on in your life, that is, that is not the conclusion. You still have the say. Amen. You still have the say. And the say that you have, if you can be patient and go back to the word and really discover what Christ is thinking according to his word, and then you develop the same mindset before you come to give a response to the situation, you are going to see that things will change. Hallelujah. Things will change. Hallelujah. Things will change. We have authority on earth to, Bible says, if we close a door, the door is closed. If we open a door, the door is open. That is what he says. Amen. I am church. You are church. We belong together. We have one spirit. And our head, his spirit, dwells within us. On Wednesday, our sister Anne was sharing a testimony of something that happened. A, a case that we, you know, something we, we had prayed over. Uh, you know, I don't remember how, how she put it well, but I'm going to try to paraphrase. And then the word of the Lord came saying the case was closed and she held on to that word of the Lord. I, I tell you, to be honest, totally forgot about it. In fact, when she was saying it, I couldn't still remember that we prayed for that. But the word of the Lord came and she held on to the word of the Lord. Circumstances were contrary, but she held on to the word of the Lord. Amen. Circumstances were not, were saying the opposite, but she held on to the word of the Lord. And come, come with me to Luke 1, verse 45. Anybody? Luke 1, 45. I got a roundup now. Luke 1, 45. What does it say? Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of the things spoken by the Lord. Because God doesn't make sense. God is not going to make sense to you. Don't wait for God to make sense. If God was making sense, you wouldn't be here this morning. If God was to make sense, we wouldn't be here. God makes God. We got to graduate ourselves, lift ourselves, get out of the physical circumstance from within our spirit and connect to the higher level where we belong because we belong at a higher level. That is where we operate from. That is where we speak from. That is where we, we get our vision, aspirations, and desires from. That is where we get direction from. Bless is she that believes. Bless is she that believes. So she held on to the word. And on Wednesday, she shared a testimony with us. The case was closed. Amen. The case was closed. Hallelujah. Why? Because God's word. Hey, can I tell you something? God wor God's word works. But for it to work in your life, you have to work it. It's not just going to work automatically. You have to work it. You got to hold on to it. You got to envision it. You got to be consumed by it. You got to speak it. Even when circumstances are telling you the opposite, you got to speak it. You got to speak it. Oh, I had a dream and the dream was evil. Don't say what the dream was. Speak what God's word said. Oh, you wake up today and the left leg doesn't want to cooperate with the right. Don't speak what you feel. Speak the word of God. Or you swipe your card and the card doesn't work and the bills are piling up and the devil tells you, wow, what a poor man or woman. Don't even consider that you are not poor. You are not. That is why I hate the word that says, uh, you know, those nice words, they say, they, oh, poor you or poor, poor, poor. Why don't they, why don't people ever imagine something for, oh, rich you? Why don't they say rich you? <laughs> Anybody talking to me should use the word rich you. I like that one better. Wealthy you. Oh, wealthy you. Yes. 
that, that fits me better than poor you, poor what? That shouldn't come out of your mouth. Bible says Jesus became poor so that you will become successful. Remember, money is not wealth. Money is the fruit of wealth. Money is the fruit of wealth. Wealth is actually embedded in faith. Hallelujah. Come on now. Faith. Faith. When you know who you are in Christ and you believe that you have what it takes because God's word is in you and you go into action, you are exercising faith. And what is going to happen is that if you remain consistent, it's good, you're going to begin to see the result. Hallelujah. It wasn't the, the moment you, you, you hit your million that you became successful. You were successful first before you hit the million. Hallelujah. Come on now. It is not the time that your prayers receive answers that you, your faith became strong. Your faith was strong first. That was why you stayed the course before you see the manifestation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who, who you are spiritually is superior to who you are physically. What we got to do, Romans chapter 12 says, train your thoughts to line up with your spirit. Amen. Train up your thoughts to line up with your spirit. Train up your thoughts to line up with your spirit. Renew your mind. That is what it says. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? By changing. How does transformation come? Not by prayer, but by the renewing of the mind. Ah, come on now. Hello. You see how sometimes we mix the Old Testament practice with the New Testament covenant and then we, it tastes sour. That is what religion is. Religion is not able to, religion deprives us of properly dissecting, living the old in the old and holding on to the new. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Some people use that as a prayer. Amen. Okay. And some people still use Psalm 91. Oh, he shall do this. He shall do that. He shall hide me. He shall. No, God doesn't want to hide you. He wants to expose you. God wants you exposed. Because in exposing you, people see his power. They see his glory. He shall hide me under his what are your opinions or whatever the, the King James call it. He hides me there. God doesn't want to. He wants to show off big in you. That is Old Testament. David lived in the Old Covenant. He was a friend, not a son at the time. He was speaking as a friend. But later on, when David zoomed by faith into the spirit. He was able to receive things that pertain to our era. Oh. Time is up. Time is up. Time is up. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't close. I just give you two more, two more scriptures, okay? I, I promise, just two. I won't go beyond two. Can you come with me to Isaiah 57, verse 17? What does this say? He said, therefore, because you are son and you are an heir of God, now he said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, come on now, read it again. He said, for no weapon formed against you. Isaiah, is, did I say 54? 54, Isaiah 54, verse 17. All right, Isaiah 54. No weapon formed against you shall what? Shall prosper. No weapon. It, when he says no weapon, that includes poison. That includes in your dreams. Whatever you eat or drink in dreams. That includes the poisoning from whatever Satan wants to do. That includes, oh, come on now. You know, uh, what do you call that? Trick or treat? Trick or treat? Trick or treat in Halloween? Where they initiate children and give them witchcraft? You know that? You know those things? Yes, uh, or maybe maybe I don't I don't want to I don't want to blow your I can't break your balloon now, but 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 those trick or treat where we celebrate the spirit of the dead that is not of God, it, that that's the truth. Okay, you can do whatever you choose, but that is not of God. We don't do Halloween. Halloween is not of God. Amen. 
Oh, somebody say, oh, where? How can you say that Halloween? It, we are not called to blend with culture. We are called to stand out. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Oh, hey, all the other kids. Oh, all the other. Don't celebrate it. Don't celebrate Halloween. Do a movie night. Let kids have fun in a different way. Do something positive. You understand what I'm saying? But what he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means, and any mouth that rises up against you in judgment. Can I tell you something? As, as we are here, there's somebody talking about you and he's saying, how can he, how can she, how, who does she think she is? All those, they are releasing spirits of envy, attack, negativity toward you. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any mouth that rises up against you to challenge your position, your success, to challenge you in any way. He didn't say God shall condemn. Look at it well. He say you shall condemn. But you know what uh, friendship does? Friendship with the mindset of, oh God, Lord, fight for me. Lord, fight for oh, Papa, God, fight for me. That is foolishness. That doesn't go nowhere. You can pray like that and sweat yourself, you know, soaked yourself. It's not going nowhere. Look at the verse. Help me out. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any mouth that rises up against you to challenge you, who? Who condemns it? He say you, you. Does it mean you're going to go confront the person and say, hey, I heard you call my name. So I'm here now and I'm going to, you know, if you do like that, it's not the way. You go stand in your position as a son and you say no word, every negative word is canceled. That's it. It's canceled and you don't need to think twice about it. Oh, but they're speaking evil of me. That's all right. That's what they are supposed to do. They are of the evil. The bird flies and then you are surprised. The bird is supposed to fly. A fish is supposed to swim. A sinner is supposed to do sin. But you, the righteous, have a say. You don't go around crying. You go there and you condemn it. I condemn it in the name of Jesus. That no negative word against me shall see the light of day. You don't, you see, a voodoo. You talk about voodoo. You know what voodoo is? How you guys read science books? But voodoo is an English term. So it's, it's there in science. Voodoo is here in this city. You may live close to a witch. You don't know. I'm not trying to scare you. But you cannot live in fear. It is an honor that they live close to you. That means they have hope. Did I say I wasn't going to stay long? Let me move on. I move on. So you have authority. Say after me. I have authority. I have authority. As a son. As a daughter. I have authority. My words are powerful. So that when they throw those things and it keeps falling down and you keep rising higher, shining brighter, one day they are going to say, hey, tell me. Who are you? What is behind you? Tell me about this, your God. I hear you go to church. Amen. Come on. If God was to hide you, according to Psalm 91, how will people see it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20. And I promise I'm not going to give another scripture. Ephesians 3.20, what does it say? It says, for God is able to do abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly, above what? All. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, come on. Come on now. Yeah. No, 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 no. He say, he say, and then, and then church in religion, we say, well, uh, it is the will of God that so and so happen. Oh, it is God that is doing it for me. Honey, 
Stop being religious. He says God has the ability to do way beyond what you can imagine. Who does the imagining? Aha. If you imagine wrong, it is possible you could get it. God is not going to be party to wrong, but you could get it. But if you can imagine the things that are good and righteous and beautiful, God is able to pay the bills and lift you up to that platform. If you can imagine your business break forth, you imagine. If you can imagine your family doing well, if you can imagine your health being restored, but you have to imagine it first. You got to give God something to work with. He, if you don't give him something, it's not his responsibility to create the blueprint. According to what? To the power that is at work. Where? Where? In heaven? No, no, no. In you. Who gives the imagination? You. And who activates the power? You. According to the degree to which you activate the power, to that degree, you experience it. Come on, I thought somebody was going to be excited. It is all within us as sons. No angel can stop you. When you see an angel, don't get excited. They are happy to serve you. Am I screaming? If I scream, I apologize. I'm just happy. I'm just excited. I haven't screamed all week. So allow me to scream at you. Praise God. Oh, and I saw an angel. Angels were at church. There are some churches that celebrate, you know, what, what do you call them? Sometimes uh, uh, gold, gold dust will fall from heaven when people are worshiping. And people talk about the gold dust. They miss the presence of the spirit. The whole story is about gold dust. The whole story is, you see how, how childish we behave? You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. It's just like asking, asking a kid, I have McDonald's, baby, how do you call it? Baby, baby, baby. happy meal here on my, ref, but I have the key to the pantry. He said, give me the happy meal. Hey, happy meal. You know, so the church is happy with happy meal instead of taking the key to the pantry. In the pantry, you can make whatever you want, make it healthy. There's a bag of beans there. <laughs> Amen. Nothing is better than beans. All right. <laughs> okay. But in other words, God gave us access to the fullness of his treasure, treasures. We shouldn't be satisfied with happy meals. There is a certain power that is at work. Did I say I wasn't going to give you one scripture? Okay, I won't, but I'll just quote it. Can I quote it? Okay, <laughs> Romans 8, 11. The power that is at work in you is the same power that did what? That raised Jesus from the dead. And if the power that brought Jesus from the dead resides within you, that same spirit will also do what? Restore your mortal that the word restore is not the, is not the word. He will bring back to life. He would enliven uh, whew, uh, your mortal bodies. That is the word of God. We got everything we need. Amen. Now, somebody is going to say, well, I tried it. It didn't work. I don't want to hear you say, I tried it. It didn't work. You don't try it. You do it. If it doesn't work on Monday, there's still Tuesday. If it doesn't work this week, there's still another week. You don't quit. You don't quit. You know, my six packs, thank God you don't see the truth. I didn't develop my six pack in one workout. Has it reduced to one pack? I don't know. But you see people who have six pack, eight packs, they don't develop their muscles in one week. They don't. The consistency. Some days the body is so sore, they cannot even go to the gym. Mm. But they still struggle to flip the muscles a bit. I can't go to the gym today, but at least let me stretch up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They're still flexing the muscle. But the following week they go there. They go again. They keep at it. They keep at it. Before you know it, the six parts develop. 
before you know it, the, those who were being trained become trainers. Amen. You cannot quit. I spoke it. It didn't happen. When, do you know sometimes the harder you pray for something, the worse it seems to get? Why does it do? Why does it turn out like that? Because Satan wants to discourage you. You got to keep at it. Have you ever seen a woman go to the level room and he said, ah, oh, mm, and the baby pop? No, at least you have to do mm, two or three times. Amen. With the encouragement from the coaches, the, the nurses, they have to keep pushing you. I haven't been there yet. Okay, I haven't been there yet. But, and I, okay. But nothing good. Can I, can I say this? I'm, I'm not speaking contrary to faith. It, when you say it the first time, it is already established before God, but the manifestation takes consistency amen. and discipline. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are sons. Can you say after me, I'm a son? I'm, a son. I'm an heir. I'm an heir of God. God. Join heir with. I shall live, I shall not die. In my body is perfect health. For Jesus took my infirmities and carried my diseases. I am the blessed of the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. I'm clothed with favor as with a garment. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is the strength of my life. I succeed going out. I succeed coming in. For my life is hid in God and God in Christ. No weapon. No weapon. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it, speak to your family, speak to your loved ones, speak to your family, speak to your loved one, speak. I increase in strength. I go from strength to strength. I go from grace to grace. I go from grace to grace. I grow from wisdom to wisdom. Yes, I have the strength of the Lord in me. For, he, for my God is my strength. It's my exceeding great reward. I'm a son. I'm an heir. I refuse death. I refuse sicknesses. I refuse diseases. I refuse bondages. I refuse failure. I reject poverty. I reject anything. No curse. No curse. No curse. Speak to your marriage. Speak to your marriage. Speak to your finances. Speak to children and grandchildren. Speak to your health. Speak to your life. Speak. Say, according to the power that is at work in you. Walk it out. How do you walk it? You walk it by saying it. You don't think it, you say it. You don't think it, you say it. You don't think it, you say it. God is not committed to establishing your thoughts. He's committed to establishing your words. He says, as you have said to my hearing, so shall I do to you. Hallelujah. Speak to yourself. Hey, some people need to call the peace of God. The peace of God that resides in you. Release it into your family. Release the peace of God. Are you on medication? As you pop the pill, every day keep declaring, yes, my body is well, and I'm walking toward being off medication. You keep taking it, you keep taking it, and your body is well. As you eat, you keep declaring perfect health. The food will do you well in the name of Jesus. You are called to be a blessing, so it is beyond just getting body and soul together. You are a blessing. You are a blessing. You are the lifter of, the, of people's hands and heads. You are the lifter. You are the one who lifts people up. That is who you are because you are one with Christ. In, the, in fact, in the book of Hebrews, he say he's not ashamed to call us brothers. Why? Because we have the same father. He's not ashamed to call us brothers. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you be saturated with the life, the life, the love, and the power of God in your life. Be saturated with it in the name of Jesus. I declare 
silence to every opposition in your life. I declare, wither and remove every sickness, every disease, every defect, everything that is not of God. I command it removed in the name of Jesus. I declare long life. I speak long, healthy life, prosperous life for you, to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord Jesus. Tell him thank you. Thank you for making me a son. Thank you for making me a daughter. Thank you for making me a son. Thank you for making me a daughter. This week, I want to let you know, as soon as you leave here, Monday, the devil will try to push things your way to make you forget who you are. Amen. Go back to the video. Go back to this teaching. Listen to it. Remind yourself. Keep declaring. Keep declaring. Even when everything may not look the, like it looks like you are joking, keep speaking. The clouds may be dark, but the clouds move. And it is your word that me, who is going to move them. The sun will continue to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.